Before we get started with our character creation video, just a quick shout out to Storm Cook, who let me use the image of this Indiana Jones-esque bard, who I kind of envisioned the character that we're going to create today would look like. So make sure you check out stornart.com. A link is in the notes below. And thanks again to Storm for letting me use the artwork in this thumbnail. Hello there adventurers and welcome to Wally DM. Today we're going to do a character creation video of the Glamour Bard. Now I'm very excited about this character because I am going to be playing this character at 5th level in my friend Grumpy Turtle's one shot. This is kind of a one shot to celebrate a 4 week D&D fitness challenge and a group of us went and tried to do a little bit of a healthier eating style and tried to shed a few pounds. So this is the end results of that we get to do a one shot with grump and looking forward to playing this character in that one shot so what we're going to do today is we are going to go through the backstory that i have developed for this character and then we're going to start this character off on level one and we are going to advance him all the way up to level 10 at the end of the video at level 10 there's a special ability that i'm going to ask your guidance with and what you would choose for this character and then we'll do a little bit of wrap up and we'll get out of here so thanks for joining me and let's dig into this oh and one more thing don't forget that all of the pdfs for all of the levels can be found on my website wallydm.com and there will be a link in the notes below so if you'd like to look at these while we go through them you're more than welcome to and the pdfs will be there so let's get started Okay, so let's dig into our backstory. Now this character's name is Honer Hogwallop, and he is a half-elf bard, and he is approximately 60 years old, and in human terms, that's probably about early to mid-30s, and a little bit of backstory, I'm kind of imagining this character being from a folky type area, so a lot of towns and villages and forests and things of that nature and maybe some smaller rounded mountains. I'm kind of going more for a folk type from maybe like the Southern United States. And in fact, I believe one of the instruments I picked was the, um, the uh, dulcimer. And it is actually a musical instrument that is from the Appalachians in the eastern united states and that kind of inspired me to go more for the southern route so he is going to be playing the dulcimer he is also going to play a fiddle a mandolin and a harmonica so i'm kind of just going all in on the southern united states type of culture for this character and in fact playing this character i would probably go more for a southern gentleman type of an accent now, Honer does have two brothers, and in fact, in Honer's early 20s, now this would be his half-elven 20s, him and his two human brothers had a three-piece band, and in their local village and the surrounding communities, they become very popular, and I would probably say they had this band together for about eight years. And after about eight years, Honer became... He wasn't liking the attention anymore. He, he, he just wanted to be left alone. He was tired of all the crowds and all the people. He just wanted to, to play his instruments. And it wasn't that he wasn't grateful for everyone that appreciated his music. He just didn't want to be forced to be on stage, you know, every Friday and Saturday night to to play and he just wanted to be a a part of the community and not worshiped so much as as a musician, I guess if that makes sense. So after about 8 years, Honer goes his own direction. His brother Arbox gets a family and settles down and his brother Glaucos wasn't ready to give up yet so he found another band to jam with and he continued his boozing and partying so for honer he kind of did a little bit of traveling in the area he went up into the um for namesake let's just say the appalachian mountain type thing so he went up into the surrounding mountains uh, it's very wooded around here so he spent a lot of times in the forest in the woods he traveled from town to town meeting folks and just playing like sent and playing his instruments for for like children and for other people that just wanted to sit and listen to him and appreciate the music with this 
bard he also got a lot of costumes so he would disguise himself a lot he was use he would use his disguise kit to um, make it where he wasn't recognized he dressed a lot either like a an adventurer or maybe even down dressed to almost to uh, peasant style just so um, people wouldn't recognize him and he could just you know play play some music for just very small groups well it's during this time and we're going to say it's about 20 years of his life that honer found a friend a dryad friend by the name of nizali now honer continued to circle around all of the areas and, and play his music but at least once a month he'd come and spend a week or two with nizali and she taught him how to play fey type music so he it was at this time he learned the sylvan language and he learned how to to mix fey music in with his folky style of play now honer knew nizali his his dryad friend for quite a while i would probably say five to ten years and as a lot of DD backstories go there's a little bit of tragedy as honer comes back to visit his friend at one time and to find her tree is destroyed now i haven't quite figured out how he's going to find out yet perhaps there was uh, a few other fake creatures that were in the area or someone that was also friends with the dryad comes and finds honer and tells him what happened but in a nutshell there is a borderline evil satyr that needed the tree this this tree that this dryad had was a magical tree and found out that if he were to use this tree to make a musical instrument that it would be embedded with musical power and so the satyr came from the feywild took this tree chopped up what he needed for it and even catch, captured a little bit of the spirit of the dryad nizali and was able to use this to make an instrument and took it back with him to the feywild so it's at this point that honer becomes an adventurer he actually becomes a bard and he has an end goal of confronting the satyr and I do want to kind of say revenge, get his revenge on this person. When he does find the satyr, what exactly happens, who knows, but that's his immediate plan is to, uh, he finds out that this musical instrument exists that possibly has the spirit of his friend in it. And he wants this musical instrument and he wants to get his revenge on this satyr. Now, one more thing that does drive Honer is Nizali taught him Part, only half of a song she there was a mystical dry song of the dryads so to speak and it was a very difficult song for honer to learn and it is on the mandolin and he only learned about half of it and so he also wants to quest to find someone to teach him the other half of this song and a lot of times when he's when he's by himself probably having a few ales remembering his lost friend he'll play that song and then he just and it just stops abruptly halfway through because that's all that he knows so that's the backstory that i'm thinking it's a little lengthy there um i'm going to write it up and put it on my website so within a few days you should be able to see it up there wallydm.com i'll put a link below when it's ready for you to look at but let's go ahead and jump in and make our first level bard Okay, so here's our level one bard, and I'll go through a few of the options that I chose. I did pick Entertainer because it does seem to match a bard, and out of Entertainer, I picked, I picked Instrumentalist because he's not much of a singer. He can sing if he wants to, and he's fairly decent at it, but he's more of a, music, uh, a musician with regards to instruments, so that is where we're going with Entertainer. And by picking Entertainer, we get two skills. Those are Acrobatics and performance now as a half elf we do get a plus two to our charisma and we get to add a plus one to two of our ability scores so using the standard array i put a 15 in dexterity i used a plus one for dex to give us a plus three i put a 13 in wisdom and i feel like i'm going to choose a few of those skills so i put a plus one there to give us a plus two on wisdom and 
with charisma, I put our 14 in there. And with the 14, I added the plus two for being a half elf to give us a 16 or a plus three on charisma. Now, as a half elf, we get two extra skills. And also as a bard, we get to pick two skills. So I picked insight because I believe that Honer is really good at reading people. I picked perception because I believe that, you know, looking out in, into the crowd all the time, trying to find ways to um, ignore the crowd or get by the crowd without being noticed, I believe that he can kind of spot things. And persuasion, I feel like when he is talking to a person one on one, that he can be very persuasive just from his, from his charm and from the way that he speaks and the sincerity about him, I believe that he could persuade individuals into seeing things his way or helping him out. And the last one I picked was stealth. Again, as mentioned in the backstory, he does have a disguise kit and he just, a lot of the times he just doesn't want to get noticed as any type of a celebrity or a famous musician. So he's always trying to sneak by things. And that is why I picked stealth there. Now, armor class of 14 includes his dexterity bonus and leather armor. Also gives us a plus three on initiative and maximum hit points of nine. He does carry a rapier and a dagger. Looking at our background information over here, nobody stays angry at me or around me for long since I can diffuse any amount of tension. Going back to being very persuasive to have both sides calm down a little bit or or to defuse a situation or he's also pretty humorous and stuff. So he can make people laugh. He can play a little bit of music to help people relax, uh, things of that nature. Ideals, the stories, legends, and songs of the past must never be forgotten as they teach us who we are. And again, this kind of goes back to the song that he only knows half of, and he's still on a mission, on a journey to find that other half of that song that is dryad friend teaches him. So this is where his ideals come into play. Bonds. My instrument is my most treasured possession. It reminds me of someone I love. Now, I don't do this very often, but this is kind of future kind of uh, foreshadowing of where I would like to take this character. And hopefully my DM would work with me on this because Honer is on a mission or a journey to find the satyr that chopped down his dryad friend's tree to make a musical instrument out of. And he wants this instrument because it has a part of his dryad's friend's soul. So once he gets this instrument, it will always be his most treasured possession. And it'll remind him of someone he loves because it is made from the tree of his dryad friend. And flaws, I'm a sucker for a pretty face. Well, there really wasn't a lot to choose from. So I imagine that he can be honor in a, again in a one-on-one -on -one situation. He can probably, you know, pick people out and talk to them and uh, be quite charming when he wants to be. Um, as a half elf, we get dark vision 60 feet. We have advantage on saving throws versus charm and we cannot be put to sleep. And as standard bards goes, we get bardic inspiration at first level. That means that a target creature within 60 feet, they get a D6 die and for that can be used on an ability check, an attack roll or a saving throw. And it can be added to a D2. 20 roll before the DM says what the results are. And we get one of those or, uh, equal to our charisma modifier. So we can use three of those as a bonus action and that refills after a long rest. So one of the staples as far as the bard goes to help, um, to help the party. Uh, languages, human, elf, and Sylvan. Sylvan was learned from his dryad friend. He's got a disguise kit so he can try to uh, get by fans and people that are wanting to surround him and ask him things and the instruments I picked again going kind of more of a folklore from uh, the, the southern United States uh, Appalachian Mountain type area we've got mandolin we've got a fiddle a harmonica and a dulcimer and again a dulcimer is kind of like a steel guitar so very rarely uses a dulcimer maybe in a tavern setting if they have one there available but most of the time he's he's kind of partial to the harmonica he'll play that quite a bit when he's angry he jams out on the fiddle and when he wants to be soothing and relaxing for people he, he'll pull out the mandolin 
uh, Honer Hogwallop. And I took this name from two different areas. So for 500 points a piece, if you can tell me where I got the name Honer from, that would be very cool. And if you can guess what pop culture reference Hogwallop is, then put that in the comment section below. Again, 500 points a piece to you. Uh, for each answer that you get correctly, make sure you put your guesses in the comment section below. That'll be fun. Um, again, 60 years old, 5'6", 155, things of that nature. Um, I kind of envision this character looking not so much half elfy. Um, that movie with um, Lady Gaga, what was it? A, a Star is Born. I'm kind of figuring kind of like a mid-30s looking guy, uh, full beard, a little bit of point to his ears, but... A little bit more rounded so he has more human features than elf features but if a person looks at him closely enough they can see that he does have some elven heritage um, entertainer routine this comes from the entertainer background uh, trinket uh, this is the fragment of the song that I was talking about a little bit ago that that Honer would like to learn the other half of and costumes the building this character at first level gives us three costumes so he Honer carries these with these his most common one is his explorers outfit and that is very similar to to the thumbnail that you've seen where we have this guy with the whip and the sword and things like that and um, side note I would like him to have a whip but that is a martial weapon so if you want your character to have a whip, you need to ask your DM first because bards are not proficient with martial weapons. But I just think mirroring this image of this bard would be really cool. So I think a whip would be pretty neat. But anyway, back to costumes. So he's got his explorer's outfit, kind of Indiana Jones style with the fedora and stuff like that that he wears all the time. And he tries a little bit of uses his disguise kit so that he's not recognized um, from his singing day or from his band days. And but he does have two other ones when he does feel like he needs to put on a performance and get on stage. He has this performance costume, which is kind of a country and Western inspired rhinestone suit outfit with the five gallon cowboy hat. So I went full uh, country music on this one, a little bit of, you know, Dwight Oakham coming out or something like that. So he's got, you know, um, you know, the fancy suit and everything else. So when he does need to perform and he gets put in that position, he's going to take the stage and he's, he's going to be full ditted out. And he's going to have the whole works there. I mean, it's going to be one of those, um, uh, one of those 70s, 80s uh, style country and Western outfits there. Um, and then he also has a noble outfit. I'm kind of substituting these for costumes. Um, he, he puts this on when he needs to fit in with a more prominent crowd or portray someone of importance. So he's got those two as well. Uh, first level spells, we do get two cantrips as a bard, and we do get two first level spots, and we know four spells. So looking at those real quick, Vicious Mockery is the old standby, and I believe that he very well can insult some people with some words and cause some damage that way. Prestidigitation is, should be a little bit of fun, so if he does have to perform or whatnot, he can have like sparks shooting out of his mandolin or he can make his harmonica glow or, or, or something really cool. So lots of different stuff they can do with prestidigitation. Uh, first level spells, dissonant whispers and... I don't know if I'll have him, you know, whisper something weird or just hit a note on that harmonica that just shrills into the mind of an of a foe. Um, I'm not sure that'll be fun. Um, and a lot of these spells I kind of just picked just because I've never played a bard before, and I thought they um, they're either spells I've never played before. I felt would be a lot of fun to play. Uh, healing word again. I don't. I don't know if I have to do with words. Maybe I can just play a little tune, a little ditty on the harmonica or, or you know, hit a fiddle, you know, uh, a chord on the fiddle and uh, use healing word. Uh, thunder wave. I mean, we could do some ACDC thunderstruck on that fiddle. No, 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 you know, kind of a just, you know, cranking out away on that. And then fairy fire. Um, since a bard is a support class, I figured I would throw at least one support spell in there. And that is fairy fire. So that is it. That's our level one character. Let's level them up to level two. Okay, so Honer is now level two. He now has 15 hit points and he is a two hit die creature. So with level two, bards get what's called jack of all trades. We can now add half of our proficiency bonus 
rounded down to any non-proficient ability check. So let's take, for example, if we need to do an Arcana check, it, we are not proficient in it, so we do not get our proficiency bonus, but with Jack of All Trades, we get half of it. So now instead of a plus two, we get a plus one, and if we had an intelligence modifier, we get that as well. So now in Arcana checks, we get a plus one for being a Jack of All Trades. Now, again, that only applies to the skills that don't have a dot next to it that are that we're not proficient in. So really cool ability there and really one of the staples of the bard that I really, really like. Now the second ability we get is the Song of Rest. Now we can do a musical performance that can add an additional 1d6 hit points for myself or friendly creatures that spend at least one hit die on a short rest. So if we're out adventuring in a dungeon and we've uh, taken some damage and everybody's like, yeah, I'm going to use a hit die or two to regain some hit points, we can do a little ditty on our fiddle or a harmonica or whatnot and give everyone an additional d6 worth of hit points. So really cool feature that plays into the support class that the bard is. And we also get one more spell slot. So we go from two to three and we get to learn one more spell. And this spell that I chose is kind of a group support spell as well. And that is Featherfall. I've always liked that as a reaction. Everybody falls and we can slow their fall, make them land safely to the ground. So that is it for level two. And let's go on to level three next, where we get our glamour abilities. Okay, so our bard is now level three, and we get to pick our bard at college, which is going to be the glamour bard. Now, a lot of stuff I've seen online has a glamour bard as being this extravagant person wanting to be the center of attention, almost like Beyonce-like. And I'm going total opposite with that. I want my Glamour Bard to be a little bit more low key, but if an opportunity presents itself where he needs to be a performer, where he needs to grab that center of attention, he can. I'm kind of thinking look-wise, like the Bradley Cooper role on A Star is Born, if you've seen that movie where you know he, he's got the he's got the, he's got the clean cut beard and stuff like that but he dresses normal for the most part but if he needs to get on stage and perform then that's when he gets his his country and western rhinestone suit out and and everything just lights up and then you can you can just see you know where the glamour part comes in but for the most part you know low key stuff like that now one of the best abilities that I've ever seen with and it's with this bard here is mantle of inspiration and before we dive into these abilities too uh, glamour bard has a lot of fey magic wrapped into their into their abilities which is why I chose the backstory that I did with my dryad friend so he has Honer has a lot of experience not only does he speak sylvan but has learned some of that fey magic so Mantle of Inspiration, as a bonus action, we can use our Bardic Inspiration to put on a wondrous appearance. We can just glow, I guess, I, is kind of how I'm reading it. Creatures that I choose as playing the character, and we can choose a number of creatures up to our Charisma modifier. So at level 3, we can choose up to 3 because of our Charisma. Each gain 5 temporary hit points, and... They can use their reaction to move up to a speed, uh, up to their speed without provoking an opportunity attack. So where this is really cool, not only does it give our allies temporary hit points, but it also allows, let's say that we were ambushed and surprised and our spellcasters are now in hand-to-hand -hand combat with these with these monsters or creatures. And with our high decks, we have a very good chance of going first in the initiative order. Then we can use our mantle of inspiration to not only give our allies temporary hit points, but we can also allow them to move out of the way to safety without provoking an opportunity attack. So this is probably, like I said, one of my favorite abilities. And I can't wait to use this in a game. The next Glamour Bard ability we get is Enthralling Performance, and this is really weird. This is Seductive 
fey magic that we're going to have come out through our through our musical abilities, through the songs we, we sing, through the instrument that we play. And that is what we need to do is we have to perform for one minute to inspire an audience. Now, we get to choose humanoids. I believe it's up to our charisma modifier. Um, oh, yeah less than or equal to our charisma modifier so we can pick three humanoids now they have to make a saving throw versus wisdom or they are charmed and this is at the end of the one minute of the one minute performance so they need to watch and be an audience member for that full minute now those that are charmed will idolize idolize the bard they'll speak glowingly of the bard and they will hinder anyone that opposes the bard but of course they are going to avoid any type of violence unless they are already fighting on the bard's behalf and this lasts for about an hour or unless they are attacked or witnessing like my character attacking their allies so really cool charm effect and also if they succeed on the saving throw then they do not know that the enthralling performance tried to charm them we cannot use this ability again until we finish a short or long rest so every uh, short or long rest we can do our enthralling performance and try to charm a few members of the crowd that is really really cool now, as a regular bard, we also get an ability called Expertise. What Expertise is, is we get to pick two skills that we are proficient in, and we get to double our proficiency bonus. So we get to be an expert in two different skills. And I have chosen Performance because I am a bard, and I will need to probably perform quite a few performance checks as we play our fiddle or our mandolin or our harmonica. So that will give us a plus seven on performance. And the other one I chose is stealth because I wanted one that is more role playing, which would be my performance and one that was more combat oriented, which is my stealth. Not that stealth can't be role playing because again, Honer has escaped many times trying to get away from fans and uh, escape the crowds and people so we get a plus seven on our stealth and a plus seven on performance so really cool that's called expertise finally let's look at our spells we are we now have four spell slots for first level and we now have two second level spell slots and i have chosen invisibility as my second level spell it's just um, one of my favorites one of my standbys i love it so uh, we're putting that in there and that's going to do it for level three we're now a glamour bard let's see what happens at level four So a level four bard, we get to pick our ability score improvement, or we can pick a feat. Now, since a lot of our abilities are charisma based as far as our modifier is concerned, I have chosen to get the plus two in charisma. So at level four, our charisma goes from a 16 to an 18, which gives us a plus four modifier. And I am going to change all of our skills and saving throws to reflect that. So now with the skills modified, I am also going to scroll down here to our spell book. And we now have a spell save DC of 14 and an attack bonus of plus six. And we also get spells. We get an additional second level spell slot that takes that to three of those. And I chose silence as my next second level spell. I've never used it before and I kind of just want to see what kind of tricky things I can do with that. So uh, that does it for that. Oh, let's do one more thing. I, I would imagine at this time that we have found enough gold that we can go with a studded leather armor over leather armor and let's get our armor class up one more point to 15. So that's level four. Let's take a look and see what comes up at level five. Okay, so Glamour Bard level five. And a few things that we get here. The first thing is our proficiency bonus is now a plus three. So I have went ahead and adjusted all of my skills and things of that nature. Check out that performance with our expertise. We now get a plus 10 on performance checks and a plus nine on stealth. So that's pretty groovy right there. We also get a D8 Bardic Inspiration. So we'll go ahead and change that right there. So instead of giving out a D6, we now give out a D8. So that's pretty darn cool. And our ability that we get at level five is called Font of Inspiration. And I'm gonna put it right here under Bardic Inspiration since they kind of go together. And our Font of Inspiration 
is that we regain bardic inspiration at the end of a long or a short rest. Before, we could only use our three or four bardic inspirations in a day, and then we had to get a long rest before we got them back. Now we can use three or four in the morning, and then three or four in the evening, depending on what our charisma modifier is. So that really juices up the bard and its and his ability to be a team player and hand out that inspiration, give those dice to his party members and help them out. Now the last thing for level five is our spells. We get two third level spots. I've already increased our spell attack bonus up here. And there is our two third level spots. And for third level, I have picked the spell hypnotic pattern i had originally thought fear would be a good one i wanted something a little bit more combat oriented but since our bar our glamour bard already has an ability that that gives a charm effect i figured why not go with hypnotic pattern if you're not familiar with that it creates a 30 foot cube of twisting patterns and all creatures inside that make a saving throw versus wisdom and if they fail then they are charmed by the spell and incapacitated with a speed of zero so a really cool spell there that kind of ties into the glamour bard and what we're going with as far as charming and using this hypnotic fey magic now that does do it for level five so let's go ahead and advance to level six Okay, so here we are at level 6. We now have 39 hit points for a 6 hit die creature and still have our 1d8 of Bardic Inspiration. At level 6, we get an extra spell slot as well as two new abilities. The first one is a Bardic ability called Counter Charm, if you're not familiar with that. And I do apologize, the font is getting small, but it is right in this area up here to my, uh, right above me. Counter Charm. We can start a musical performance that lasts until the end of my next turn, and during this time, myself and any friendly creatures have advantage on saving throws be versus being frightened or charmed. So kind of a protective effect when I'm sitting there jamming out on my fiddle or my harmonica, so that's really cool. The next ability that we get at level 6 is a Glamour Bard ability, and this is the Mantle of Majesty. And again, I apologize for the small fonts up there. Cloaked in Fey Magic, we can cast Command as a bonus action without a spell slot. We can make our appearance of unearthly beauty for one minute, and that does require concentration. Uh, concentration during this time we can cast command as a bonus action on each of our turns creatures that are already charmed by us possibly by hypnotic pattern or our other ability automatically fail the saving throw and we can use the mantle of majesty ability once per long rest so we just give out this beautiful aura that makes all creatures uh, look upon our fey magic that we have entwined with us and just do what we tell them to do. We give them a one word command and they have to do it. So an amazing ability right here with the mantle of majesty, being able to use the command spell for up to a minute and command different creatures on what to do. And it works so good with our ability that we already have going with charm, uh, our charm abilities and our charm spells. So really, really good there. Now our spells, we do get an additional third level spell slot, so it takes us to three. And I've chosen Liamon's Tiny, Tiny Hut because I am a fan of dice camera action. And I've seen the character Paulton abuse the heck out of this spell. And now I want to try it myself. So that is the third level spell that I picked. Not only that, but it will help protect our party when we're out and about in travels without a... Uh, nice comfortable end to stay at so that's going to do it for us for level six let's go ahead and go to level seven okay actually i've decided to combine level seven and eight because very little happens on these level on level seven we just get a fourth level spell slot and i'll refer to that here in just a little bit when we scroll down for our eighth level spell but at eighth level we get an ability score improvement or a feat and once again i've decided to bypass the feat 
in lieu of making my charisma a 20. So now we have a plus five modifier on our charisma skill checks and anything to do with our charisma modifier. And as you can see over here for performance, we've got a plus 11 with our expertise plus um, plus eight on persuasion. Uh, that now gives us five bardic inspirations every short or long rest, which is really, really good. That also affects our uh, mantle of inspiration and our enthralling performance and all of our glamour bard abilities. So really, really good there. We now have a 20. Now, I missed this on a few other sheets, but our spell DC is now a 16 and a plus eight on the spell attack bonus. And at level seven and then level eight, we end up accumulating two fourth level spell slots. And I wanted to fit in themes, so I went with Charm Monster. I thought that would come in handy. And I've always been a sucker for teleportation effects. So Dimension Door is my second choice. So two really strong spells, fourth level spells for our level eight Glamour Bard. Now let's take a look at level nine. Okay, so here we are at level 9, and the big thing for level 9 is we get our proficiency bonus up to a plus 4. And I have already adjusted my saving throws and my skills. Look at that, we've got a plus 13 on performance, plus 9 persuasion, plus 11 stealth, so really good stuff there. Now, in addition to our proficiency bonus being plus four, we also switch our Song of Rest from a D6 to a D8. And I apologize, I know it's hard to read over here, but to remind you, a Song of Rest is a musical performance that allows us to give our party extra hit points as long as they spend at least one hit die on a short rest. So instead of a D6, that's now a D8. We also, at ninth level, get our very first fifth level spell and I kind of copped out on this one I went really easy with that one spell slot and I went with greater restoration I always find that I, I mean it'd probably be party dependent if I was actually playing this character and got to that level of what I would choose but I just went with the safe bet there to help my party if they were to become cursed or petrified or had something that was lowering their maximum hit points or things of that nature. So that is Honer Hog Wallop on level nine. Let's finish this video out with level 10 and take a look at the goodies that we get and we'll finish it out from there. So next up, level 10. Okay, so Honer is now a level 10 Glamour Bard. He now has 63 hit points and he gets a few more cool abilities. And this will be our last level that we do today. The first ability that he's going to get is Bardic Inspiration is now a D10. So if you see that right there, we can give a character a D10 Inspiration die five times per short or long rest. So that is really cool and works really well for us. We also get expertise, so we get to pick two more skills that we have expertise in. I pick perception, that'll now give us a plus 10 on perception checks, and I also pick persuasion. So now Honer is very persuasive, he gets a plus 13 on that skill check. Now then, our last ability we get as a bard is Magical Secrets. So at level 10, we get to pick two spells from any class that we could learn so it's got to be th from a cantrip to fifth level and we get to add them to our spells so this is where i'm going to leave off and i'm going to leave it up to you what two spells from any one class would you pick to add to this bard i'll look forward to seeing your comments below on the two spells that you selected for honer the glamour bard and let's wrap this thing up so this was a little bit of a long video, but I had a blast and I hope you enjoyed yourself and going through building this Glamour Bard with me. A few things on our way out. Don't forget to check the notes because I'm going to, the note section because it's going to have a ton of links in there. We've got Stormcrow who provided us with the Glamour Bard art. Thank you very much. Make sure you check out his website. Don't forget I have all of these PDFs level 1 through 10 on my website wallydm.com and they are there for you to print out and use or to refer when refer to as you're creating your own character now there are a couple things that would be really cool if you can answer for me down in the comments number one the name honer hogwallop 
Honer means something. I chose that name for a reason. So if you know what that is, put it in the comments below. It's worth 500 points. And Hogwallop is kind of a pop culture reference. Let me know if you get that. That is also worth 500 points. And don't forget for our magical secrets ability tell me two spells from any one class that you would give honer hogwallop and to kind of round out a spell base or you think that would go and fit with this class so that's all i have for you today what do you think of the glamour bard is this a character that you would play if so is there anything along the ways that you would have done differently don't forget to leave some great comments below. I always appreciate the interaction. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, thanks for watching, and on to the next.